critical thickness of insulation, insulation general aspects. I'm just, I'm just going to read it. It's uh, pretty comprehensive. So definition, a material which retards the flow of heat with reasonable effectiveness is known as insulation. Insulation serves the following two purposes. You just listen to it quite carefully. Okay, a material which retards the heat flow of heat with reasonable effectiveness. We, uh, we are not talking about effectiveness right now. Okay, is known as insulation. Insulation serves the following two purposes. It prevents the heat flow from the system to the surroundings first. It prevents the heat flow from the surroundings to the system. So if we talk about, suppose heat flow from surroundings to the system, we talk about refrigerator. Okay, we talk about AC pipes. Uh, suppose if this is your split AC, okay, and if this is your condensing unit outside, so here there are the pipes. You will find it is being covered with black material, kind of uh, something uh, of black in color. That is basically nitrile rubber insulation. Okay, the coil temperature here, which is reaching towards the evaporator is actually of 10 degree Celsius magnitude and the outside is supposed 40 degree Celsius. So heat is definitely going to peep in. You don't want it. Otherwise, the air conditioner won't be effective. So you need to insulate it. So that's why. And heat flow from the system to the surroundings. And suppose if there is, an, uh, if there is a boiler which is, just, uh, which is kept inside your room, room and you know that the boiler is at suppose 200 degree Celsius. Suppose I'm just talking about uh, you have an area and in that area you have a particular thing which is actually generating heat at around 200 degrees Celsius. So you need to insulate it so that there won't be any casualties. Okay, there should not be any casualties. If someone touches something which is at 200 degrees Celsius, definitely there could be some severe burns. So, they, uh, so it has to be insulated. Okay, if at all you do not require that heat to be transmitted inside the room. Okay, so Let's talk about the fields of application of insulations are boilers and steam pipes, air conditioning systems. See, I have talked about these two. Okay, food preserving stores and refrigerators. Once again, refrigerators, insulating bricks like firewall, glass wool, and all. Okay, uh, fire brick, glass wools, and all. Preservation of liquid gases, factors affecting thermal conductivity. Some of the important factors which affect thermal conductivity K of the insulators. The value of K should always be low to reduce the rate of heat flow are as follows. Temperature. For most of the insulating materials, the value of K increases with increase in temperature. This is a very, very important line. This is a very, very important line. For most of the insulating materials, the value of the K increases with the increasing in temperature. Density. There is no mathematical relationship between K and Rho. The common understanding that high density insulating materials will have higher values of K and it is not always true. So, uh, do not, uh, you know, uh, take care of, uh, means don't, you know, uh, you know, go into this particular line, you can just stay away for it. But this is quite important. Okay, you just increase the temperature, the thermal conductivity tends to increase the direction of uh, heat flow. For most of the insulating materials, except few like wood, the effect of direction of heat flow on the values of K is negligible. Okay, moisture, it is always considered necessary to prevent ingress of moisture in the insulating materials during service. It is however difficult to find the effect of moisture on the values of K of different insulating materials. Quite comprehensive. Air pressure. It has been found that the value of K decreases with decrease in pressure. So temperature, if you increase the temperature for most of the insulating materials, it will actually increase. And air pressure, if you actually, uh, you know, if you actually decrease the pressure, the value of K tends to decrease. So suppose if this is the K, so it actually tends to, in, it actually, it actually tends to increase okay with the temperature and with the pressure okay it actually tends to decrease okay so this is something now let's talk about for cylindrical bodies with r1 lesser than rc rc is the critical thickness of insulation the heat transfer increases by adding insulation till r2 is equals to rc r2 is the outer radius you just uh, uh, remember this line for cylindrical bodies with r1 lesser than rc the heat transfer increases by adding insulation till R2 is equals to RC as shown. Okay, this is R2, this is RC, this is R1, the internal radius. If insulation thickness is further increased, the rate of heat loss will decrease from its peak value. But until a certain amount of insulation denoted by R2 dash at B is added, 
if if you talk about this if uh, suppose if we come to this for cylindrical bodies with r1 greater than rc the heat transfer decreases by adding insulation this happens when r1 is large and rc is small a good insulating material is used with low k and ho is high ho means outside uh, convective coefficient at outside surface is higher in steam and refrigeration pipes heat insulation is the main objective for insulation to be properly effective in restricting heat transmission the outer radius must be greater than or equal to the critical radius so it will be like suppose if this is the wire's internal diameter okay if this is the internal uh, internal radius of the wire so this is the uh, the external radius uh, the external diameter of the insulation so it the heat will be like this and it will come this come to here okay so finally what's happening here for a certain radius the heat is actually increasing and thereafter it is decreasing because the amount of air pockets is still not activated this is how the insulation acts it has numerous numerous air pockets and you know air is an insulator okay so the amount of air pockets getting activated with this heat are they are actually uh, they are still getting activated so that's why heat is increasing and once all the once all the uh, activation has been done the heat trans the heat actually reduces okay so now critical radius of insulation for sphere this is the sphere everything is given here so critical thickness of insulation for sphere okay for the cylinder uh, if i talk about for the cylinder it is k by ho now let's talk about for the sphere so it is q and we all know okay so it is q is equal to t1 minus t a this is the uh, you know resistance for the sphere and this is the convective resistance okay what do you need to do adopting the same procedure as that of the cylinder okay i haven't done the derivation for the cylinder here i'm taking the derivation for the sphere directly and i have written down the rc for cylinder critical uh, radius of insulation for the cylinder is k by h o okay so adopting the same procedure so just you need to derivate with the respect of the external radius equate it to zero okay and so you will find out that if the r2 means the external radius is replaced by the insulation radius critical radius of insulation then you will get with a simple derivation three to four steps you will get r2 is equals to 2k by ho okay now let's talk about some numericals on this calculate the critical radius of insulation for asbestos k is equals to 0.172 watts per meter kelvin surrounding a pipe and exposed to room air at 300 kelvin with h is equals to 2.8 watts per meter kelvin calculate the heat loss from a 475 kelvin 60 mm diameter pipe when covered with the critical radius of insulation and without insulation solution okay so let's talk about the solution now so it's given k is equals to 0.172 okay so t1 is also given t2 is also given so h not is given and the radius is also given the diameter is given you just have to reduce the radius the critical radius of insulation i have already told you for the cylinder is k by ho okay so this is the answer so with insulation now you know how to do it okay you just have to take it is 1 by h o a o so a o is directly proportional to r o and r o is now r c because now you have added on the insulation so it is this and without insulation it is just the normal convection okay and on the similar lines if we talk about this the similar thing is there so it is r1 everything is given okay and rc is greater than and and, the, and uh, you know the formula that is rc is equal to k by ho so just you need to find out the critical radius of insulation and maximum heat dissipation per meter length of the cable we, you know that if you talk about rc uh, this will be the convective resistance when the insulation is added and this is the con, uh, this is the conductive resistance for the cylinder so if we add up so this will be the total thermal resistance and you just have to talk about you just have to calculate the q max and on the similar lines this is another uh, this is another numerical so everything is given so the critical radius of insulation will be given by we all know since it's a cylinder once again so percentage change you just have to calculate the heat transfer uh, uh, with this uh, heat transfer through the cylinder first of all without insulation okay and you get a value and then you do the heat transfer with the insulation you get a value okay and then you do uh, and then you need to see what is the percentage change and this is the percentage change formula okay 
through an insulated wire okay so here it is so how uh, this is how you will get the percentage change okay so here the question was uh, the heat flow through an insulated wire means both the uh, both the uh, or, or de both the derivatives are using the insulation but once the insulation is uh, only given by the external radius okay and then that radius has changed to the critical okay so if you're talking about r2 here it is r2 and here it is rc okay so this is the difference so an rc we know that is rc is equals to k by h naught so one uh, for uh, for the first um, uh, for the first heat you have calculated the heat with the external radius r2 for the second heat you have calculated the heat with the critical radius rc and you have got these two heats and these two heats has to be you know put into the formula for percentage increase and this is the formula for the percentage increase we all know and just you just calculate the percentage increase is 11.6% approximately 12% okay 